Our approach to architecture is to make spaces which move you in some way and think that good art should provoke and move in the way that this building does. I love the tranquility. It's lovely as you drive up the drive to know you're getting away from everything. It was a house built with views in mind and just the whole experience of, of living in a place that has been built for who you are and what you want. We don't start our projects with preconceived ideas about what the architecture should look like. We really try and involve the client and make it a true collaboration. In this instance, the clients brought a lot of their personality to the project. And I think we ended up with a result which only really could have occurred in these conditions with these clients. If we think about what we first thought we were getting and what we've ended up with, they're poles apart, not in a bad way, but in a way that's good because it evolved as we went through the discussion with Denison. They got to understand us better and we understood more what the options were. So though the must-haves are all incorporated, they're not incorporated in the way I probably first envisaged them, but it's a much better outcome because of that. So we had the influence of tower houses through to baronial palaces and Charles Rennie Mackintosh. We also brought a different conceptual thread to the project, which was the work of Eduardo Chalida and his sculpted works, particularly on the large rocks. And we imagined the building almost like this rock, which is placed in the landscape and then eroded and shaped to fulfill the brief and to express its relationship to the landscape, the movement of the sun and the prevailing wind conditions. It was built very much as a, a house for us. It's a house built to get people together. It's got big communal areas. It has spaces you can get away. A big open plan house wouldn't work for us as, as people. So having these spaces you can all hide away from if you want to, I think is very reflective of us and our personality. The building nestles in a natural hollow on the site. So the lower ground floor is completely submerged on the south elevation. And over time, as the landscaping is introduced into the site, we hope the building has this impression of emerging from the landscape. The building's clad in recycled TV screens collected from around Scotland. There's about nine and a half thousand screens gone into the exterior cladding. So where these would usually become waste, they're now reused. And that's part of a nod to Scottish heritage of the Harling, which is a traditional building material used here. It's got a really lovely quality. The material is almost like the same tones as the moody Scottish sky. And they have a very beautiful effect in the light and in the rain, and this changeable character, which really suits the landscape here. Materials are also used in an innovative way in the main hall. We've used recycled newspaper cladding on the ceiling to give a kind of elemental quality to the space, almost cave-like. We've used gold leaf to line the oculus in the main hall, which casts a lovely warm glow over the interior walls. The walls themselves are clad in clay, which include mica flecks, which catch the light as you move around the space. And the floor has recycled mirror aggregate in, so that, again, the light catches them and animates what's quite a large space. It was a very collaborative process and they really enrich that process with their distinct personalities and their kind of playfulness which you start to see in parts of the building. So one of the quirky parts in the library is what's been christened a Scooby-Doo door. So this all stems from any Scooby-Doo cartoon always has a book where you lean on it and a secret door opens. Always something I thought was quite good fun and we've managed to incorporate it here. When you walk in, unless you know where to look, you would never know it existed. Once it's there, it's obvious, and it's got a lovely little room that you can sit quietly and read or work, not being disturbed. It's just great fun and very much, again, a reflection of the house being fun rather than taking itself too seriously. So a lot of the spaces in this house were designed around you know, specific bits of furniture. Those details start to influence other parts of the design. So the edge of this table features a letterpress motif, which is reflected in the design of these bespoke tiles by uh, local ceramicist. You know, these different bits that the client brings to projects helps create things which are unique and distinct. That idea of an autobiographical house is much more evident when the clients have a strong personality. It's, you know, testament to their character and also our process of bringing clients into the process. And I think it, you know, elicits an emotional response, which is what we look for in our architecture. Living here has been probably more than we could have hoped for. You always have a vision of what you're building, but the reality is always slightly different. So it certainly lived up to all of our expectations and more.
I think just going through that experience can't help but, but leave an impression on you. So absolutely, it's changed my life.